All right, welcome back. And today we're going to be looking at how to describe a histogram in a few simple steps. Histograms are one of the most common types of graphs that you're going to encounter in statistics. And so it's very important when you come across one that you're able to interpret the key features of the histogram, what it's telling you, and also being able to relay that to your potential audience if you're making a histogram yourself. And so when we're describing a histogram, there are three key features we want to look at. Um, these three categories are central tendency, dispersion, and what I like to call quirks, kind of strange things, special features of the histogram. And if you can kind of cover these three bases, you pretty much have described everything you can about the histogram. So central tendency talks about where the middle of the data is. Where does the data tend to cluster or center around? Uh, sometimes this will be the literal middle of the histogram, but not always. Sometimes we might see a lot of data close to one side or the other. Uh, how high is the peak? Meaning are a ton of values in one of those uh, intervals? Or is it a little more spread out? And is there clustering around a particular value? And you can answer uh, more than one of these questions with one piece of evidence since these questions kind of overlap in a way. Um, dispersion, on the other hand, talks about how far the data spreads out. And so, uh, firstly, how far out do they spread? Meaning, what's the range? Is there a large range of values? Or is there a small difference between the biggest and the smallest value? Uh, how many um, observations are far from the center, and sometimes we call this the tail width, the tails of the histogram, are a lot of values clustered right near the center, or do they tend to spread out pretty far with a high frequency, or there are a lot of values uh, very far away from the middle? And do observations stick out further on one side or the other? Sometimes we might have a really long winding tail on the left where maybe there's not a lot of values, but they spread far away. And other times you might have it where there are values spreading far away from the, spent, the center on the right side. And lastly, quirks, special features and kind of weird things about the histogram. Uh, firstly, are there any outliers? And outliers are kind of values that are far away from other data points and they usually stick out and they look like maybe they don't belong there or something strange is going on with the data. Uh, are there any gaps in the data? Um, if you have an outlier, chances are you'll have a gap as well because that one data point is going to be really far um, on the histogram away from other data points. What is the shape of the histogram? Sometimes we might have a, a distribution where the, the heights of all the bars in the histogram are the same from left to right. And other times you might see a peak. Um, and where is that peak? Is it in the middle? Is it on the left? Or is it on the right? Or do we have something else going on? And how many peaks or centers are there? We'll see uh, some, there's some weird distributions where we might have more than one middle where uh, data tends to cluster around. And so before we look at a couple of examples, uh, here are just some common shapes of histograms that you'll encounter. Um, starting with the green one, we can see that a symmetric, also unimodal distribution, unimodal meaning one mode, uh, symmetric uh, meaning that's the same on the left and on the right side. And we also have a uniform distribution, which is when the bars, the heights of all the bars in the histogram are roughly equal. And so it tends to form either a square or a rectangle shape. Uh, when we have a center that is, or a middle of the data that is close to the right side, we call that skewed left, because when this happens, usually there's a, a winding tail going to the left and conversely skewed right is the opposite where 
a lot of the data tends to be on the left side and we have a little bit of data going really far away from it on the right. And lastly, a bimodal distribution is when we have two modes or two centers of the data. We can see that there's a large cluster of data on the left side of the histogram as well as on the right side of the histogram. And so let's look at a few examples. This first one covers miles per gallon of various vehicles. And so uh, this uh, histogram looks very much like uh, the symmetric uh, shape right here. Um, so now we want to answer the three questions we have about histograms. A central tendency. Uh, we could say that the vehicles tend to center around 36 to 38 miles per gallon. It's kind of tough to see. The font is a little small on the x-axis. That's about where those two really high peaks are. And when we go to dispersion, we could say, oh, vehicles range from 30 miles per gallon to about 45 miles per gallon. That seems to encompass all of the vehicles in this data set. And there were relatively few vehicles on either extreme. It seems like the majority are really close to the middle, you know, give or take two to four miles per gallon. Uh, and then quirks, strange things about uh, this histogram that we might want to point out. Uh, the shape is symmetric and unimodal. There's not really any outliers here. Um, nothing that really sticks out to me. Um, but of course, that's a subjective thing. And there is one small gap between 43 and 44 miles per gallon. Uh, you could point that out. Um, but in this case, it might not be entirely necessary since that's such a small gap. Uh, for a second example, I looked at calorie counts of fast food sandwiches at a popular uh, fast food chain and made a histogram. On the x-axis, we have the calories of the sandwich, and on the y-axis, we have the frequency. And so looking at this one, we see that there's a peak. The highest uh, bar is uh, 500 to 550 calories with a frequency of 5. And it seems like most values are in the 350 to 550 calorie range. Uh, with dispersion, how far do they spread? We see that the overall range is 250 to 750. And once again, not too many values far away from the center. It looks like about three quarters of all the sandwiches here are within about 100 calories of the center. There's nothing really far out. And then quirks. This one is a little tougher to tell because we don't have as many observations. Uh, you could say this uh, shape is roughly symmetric, but here I said it was skewed right because we see on the left side we still have a relatively high frequency um, all the way to the left. And then on the right we kind of get a little bit of a tail shape where there are smaller frequencies, but the values tend to spread out further. Um, so for that reason, I said it was probably more skewed right than symmetric. We have two gaps in this histogram, one at 300 to 350 calories and one at 650 to 700 calories. And we might have a potential outlier at the 700 to 750 range. We see one sandwich was in that calorie range and since, uh, there are no other sandwiches greater than 650 calories. I label this as a potential outlier, but it's really uh, too close to say for sure if this is really an outlier or not. And lastly, um, looking at this final example, uh, this last graph here is a histogram counting the number of letters in each word I say in this sentence and the one after it. And I made sure to use humongous words here to make my diagram significantly more interesting to viewers. Uh, this one looks much different from the other two. 
uh, looking at central tendency, we have a peak at four letters. Uh, most uh, The four letter word was the most common length word in those two sentences. And we see there's a cluster around two to four letters. Uh, those are far and away the highest bars on this histogram. Looking at dispersion or spread, we see here we have a range of one to 13 letters. Uh, the data spreads out relatively far here. You can see on the right side, there's a lot of values strength far away from our main cluster. And not only are there values spreading far away, but there's several of them doing that. You can see in the range of seven to nine letter words, there were multiple observations for each of those a number of letters. And that's still pretty far away from our two, three, four letter word uh, middle. And lastly, with quirks, this is another skewed right distribution with gaps at 10 letters and 12 letters. And seeing how far they spread out from the middle, we can see that there are potential outliers at 11 and 13 letters, especially that 13 letter word that looks way off from what we see in the rest of the histogram. And we might label that as a potential outlier to look at later on.